Hey, hey, Push the Red Nation. Thank you for tuning in to the channel today for the battle of two trail shoes. The Mega Asics Trabuca Max 2 versus, in this corner, the Brooks Caldera 2 Monster Truck Trail Shoe. Now, we're going to go over these shoes from toe to heel, from upper to outsole. Tell you all about the good, bad, and the ugly. So let's check them out. Now the Trabuca Max 2 I have worn for probably over 300 miles on all types of terrain from very muddy conditions to dusty trails to very sandy or deep sand trails over streams, up mountains, down mountains, and everything in between. And I can tell you that this shoe, for me, is probably my favorite shoe of all time. But I thought with buying the Caldera 6, I was going to have an equally plush ride and be able to adapt this shoe to all of the same type of conditions. But shoes like runners, one shoe might be great for me, another shoe might be great for you. All depends on how they fit you, the purpose, how your feet are, and your type of running. But I'm going to be going over it all right now. So let's go. So with the ASICS Trabuca Max 2, we have what they're calling a jacquard mesh upper. Very, very roomy. Very airy. On the front, it has an elevated kick plate or toe guard. Has a very soft, pliable toe guard on the upper. Has a metal clip on the front of the laces and a Velcro-like attachment on the rear of the heel for attaching gaiters. The laces are very light and pliable and because of the length of them, so you don't have laces flopping all around, there is a very nice, with a little pull on them, an elastic band on the laces that allow you to tuck those laces underneath that elastic to hold them in place while you're running so they're not all jumbling all around. Very nice padding around the ankle, heavily padded on the heel, nice padded, lightly or thin-like tongue padded, fully gusseted, or what I'll call fully gusseted, except for the top inch, inch and a half, of the tongue. The midsole is the Flight Foam Blast Plus, which is the softest, most responsive foam in the Asia Colitis. The same foam that's in the Nova Black. For those of you who have tried out that shoe. Last year and the year before, that was shoe of the year for most shoe reviewers and retailers. For the outsole, we have 4.5 millimeter lugs, about the same as a Caldera 6. You can tell by the honeycomb shape of the outsole that a lot of weight was taken off the shoe by taking out strategically rubber where it is not needed. You can tell by the placement of the lugs that again they're strategically placed where the shoe designer knew from studies that have looked at in mapping the foot strike of runners on the trails where they need the lugs placed and that's where they are on this outsole. They're not where they are not needed and they are where they are needed. ASICS is saying a men's size 9 in the U.S. has 43 millimeters. Yes, 43 millimeter stack height in the heel, 38 millimeter stack height in the forefoot for a 5 millimeter drop. Let's move over to the Caldera Sec. The big highlight of this monster shoe is the midsole. This has what Brooks is referring to as their nitrogen infused DNA loft V3 foe. Shoe designers and shoe companies are finding out in the design process that by infusing nitrogen into the foe, 
it is making the foam thicker yet lighter, which means they can use more foam, but in putting the nitrogen in, it's going to make it soft. But we're going to be talking about that word softer in just a bit. With the Caldera 6, let's go from the toe box to the back, same as we did with the Trabuca. Now, one of the drawbacks for me with the Caldera 6 is the toe guard. It has a very rigid and hard toe box guard, which for me, on my right foot only, the inside of my big toe right here, developed the blister. And I pride myself in proper foot care. Hadn't had a blister in two or three years, but with this shoe on my first run, developed a blood blister on that spot. And it's right where the toe cup or toe guard plate is embedded into the midsole for whatever reason. Second time I wore the shoe on a 25 mile trail run in training, I bandaged up that spot on my toe, had mid-weight cushion socks on, same thing happened. Had to stop midway through that training run to change that bandage because it didn't matter how much foam tape I put on my toe. That blister still developed for some reason. So there's still a heavy rubber kick guard for the toe on the front, same as the Trabuca. has a very light, airy mesh upper, which is quick drying. Same as the Trabuca, there's that elastic that allows you to put the laces underneath for storage during races. It has very nice, lightweight, pliable laces. Excellent color, which was my reason for getting this shoe. My favorite color neon yellow. The tongue is a little bit more firmer padding, but very nice. Has the same attached tongue up to about the top, maybe two inches of the tongue. Very well padded around the ankle. Very nice heel cup for stability. Also on the back of the heel has the Velcro-like attachment for gaiters. On the front of the laces, whereas the Trabuca at the middle clip, the Brooks Caldera 6 is kind of a heavy material loop, which I think with this type, you will need a little bit different gaiter and a little bit larger toe clip on the front of your gaiter than with the, the Trabuca. With the Trabuca, you're going to need to have a, a, a specific gaiter that has a small clip on the front of the gaiter to hook on to that metal clip on the shoe. Let's talk about the midsole. Talked about the DNA Loft version 3 foam, nitrogen infused. Brooks is saying there's men's size 9 US, 36 millimeter stack height in the heel and 30 millimeters in the forefoot for a six millimeter stack height, one millimeter more than the Tribuca. Now, obviously in looking at the monster truck shoe from Brooks, the stack height looks a lot more. However, one of the features with the shoe is that your foot is cradled inside the shoe. So your foot is actually your heel, actually going to be coming down about right here. So that foam on the top is actually cradling your foot. So that's giving you a lot better stability when running on uneven trails, which most trails are uneven at some point. So depending on the type of surfaces you're running on, if you're running on a lot of mountainous trails, Caldera 6 may be the shoe for you between these two. A little bit better side stability than the Trabuca. But each shoe has its pluses and minuses. Now for me in wearing these two shoes, higher stack height, softer foe, which is the major plus for me. I've worn this shoe over 300 miles and one of the great things about this shoe is that it cleans up very well. And as you can see from the picture I'm putting out, 
that from the last 50K I ran in, we had a three-hour rainstorm, and all the trails turned from nice, dry, gravelly sand to two to six inches of mud. And for probably the first two hours of the race, everyone's shoes were caked with mud. But the next day, when I got home, took my garden hose out, of high pressure, sprayed all of the mud off the shoe, bristle brush, get everything else out of, put these in the wash machine, then air dried. And I can pretty much say as clean as they were the day that I first got these shoes in the mail. Won these shoes in four races, two 25 kilometer races or 15 milers, a mountain half marathon trail race, and the 50K race that I just ran in a couple weeks ago. And all of them, I won my age group wearing their shoe. Because of the blister development with the Caldera 6, I haven't worn this shoe very much. I probably have about 50 miles on this shoe. The shoe is looking exactly like it did the first day I received it. I wore this shoe primarily on very sandy trails, so it didn't get mud caked on it. I didn't wear it through any type of streams or water crossings, but I did wear this shoe one day when it rained out on the trails and it did dry rather quickly. So again, like any shoe, you have to buy them according to what you're going to wear them for, the type of trail. If you're looking for a lighter shoe, then I'll say go with the ASIC. That's what I'm giving the Dr. Dave Push the Run certification to. And thumbs up. It's my shoe of choice. And you're giving it the green light. Bought it. I've talked to a lot of people who we equally love the Caldera 6. They're granted. They probably add 15 or 20 pounds more than what I weigh. I'm about 165 pounds at 5 feet 10 inches, and I have bad hips, so I'm always looking for the softest cushioning that I can find, and here it is. So, thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for watching this reviews. Let me know which of these shoes you think would be best for you. Do you own either one of them, or do you own both? What is your shoe of choice? What do you like most about these shoes? And the reason I'm doing this versus video is because I've done individual review videos of both of these shoes and had a lot of comments asking which I like better and doing a video comparing both. So here it is. So again, this is Dr. Dave for Push the Run Nation. I'll see you out in the streets, the roads, and the trails. Push the Run.